you brought up this point, uh, Javier, and I'd like to ask you uh, about, about that. Um, I mean, there's these many analyses that have shown that this 10% uh, threshold at three months is, is important in predicting progression-free survival and, and overall survival. And, uh, and, and I guess one of the questions is um, how, how, how tight is that? I mean, how, exactly. how, much, how, how much do I, Absolutely. I mean, yep. is that something that I, can, that I should really obsess about? Or, uh, tell me a little bit. No, I, I, I fully agree with you. I think um, there is no doubt that this assessment, uh, this, this uh, exact time points assessment or with its exact numbers are being um, kind of paranoid, the, the CML community for a while. And I think we need to recognize that, you know, the, the techniques that we are using are extremely sensitive. They have a viability and everyone is different. So I think as uh, always discussed with, with you guys, I think we have a guidelines, a general guidelines that we need to really get as close as we can. But this doesn't mean that the day, uh, that exactly three months, the PCR is 12%, we should really do a dramatic change of a TKI. Rather to be aware that this is a, a, a reason why we should maybe repeat this PCR or maybe really be more aware that this patient may be in the, in the area where may not do as well, right? So I, I think I fully agree that, that these are general guidelines. I think that 10% is very well reproduced trial to trial, but of course um, the, the real life practical uh, practicality of this approach is a different story, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the more I discuss this with patients and with colleagues, I think we should be aware that, well, it's a sign. I think I always say, well, if you don't really obtain this at three months, I will repeat it. But maybe I, I won't really uh, wait for three months. I will re repeat it in like a three, four weeks and assess the patient uh, status. Yeah, I think to me, one of the biggest values of this finding is to emphasize the importance of the monitoring, monitoring. itself Absolutely. and to be following your patients very closely because you can detect early signs of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a, a warning or a flag or something that, that makes you be alert. Uh, at Absolutely. the very least, make sure that you're, you're uh, on top of the situation. So Jorge, I, I agree with what's, what's been said here. Um, and specifically, the second generation drugs do lead to um, a higher proportion of mm -hmm. patients achieving these milestones at three months or at six months or at 12 months. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I choose second generation drugs as first line therapy because that seems to translate into a lower risk of progression, which is more common as we start therapy. Um, however, I, I just want to spend a second talking about the other side of the coin, and that is what if your patient at 12 months hasn't achieved that major molecular remission at 12 months? And I want to just remind people at, that ELN and NCCN guidelines do not consider lack of an MMR a failure. In the ELN, it's a suboptimal response, but in both, failure is only if you don't achieve a complete cytogenetic remission, which is a PCR level of about 1%. And I, and I think that's important, because if you go back to the Tim Hughes paper you know, published on the IRIS data, patients who had a BCR-ABLE ratio between 0.1 and 1% had the same progression-free survival as patients who were in an MMR. The difference between the two was that patients who were in that range of 0.1 to 1% had a higher rate of losing a complete cytogenetic remission, but not necessarily progressing. Mm -hmm. So it's a time when you can assess adherence to the drug and making sure patients are taking their drug correctly, optimizing dose, but I'm not sure, I, I don't think it's necessarily a time that we would you know, just switch to something else if they're in a complete cytogenetic remission. Uh, absolutely, and, and I think that that brings a, a, an important issue that you're starting to to, uh, to address, that when we're assessing a patient, we're not just evaluating a PCR of a patient. It's not a, you know, it's not a, an, an issue about a PCR, it's an issue about a patient. And uh, so, 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 Harry, I'll, 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 get, I'll, I'll, I'll send back the question to you on, on um, Tell me a little bit about how, how important is it to assess then um, the, any side effects uh, you know, that, that may be affecting uh, how the patient is feeling despite the PC, what the PCR is, quality of life, do you use any quality of life assessments, formal or informal? Uh, how, how, much, how much should we emphasize those things when we visit the patients? Well, this is critically important. I mean, there have been multiple studies that have shown that adherence to your ABLE TKI correlated with responses and, and outcomes to therapy. And so we need to consider all of the barriers to patients taking um, their drugs on time and as scheduled. These might be financial barriers. 
they might be barriers in terms of the side effects of the therapies that aren't being uh, managed well. And so um, I continue to see my patients, even when they've been on therapy for five years and they're doing great, I continue to see them every three months. And, and I do that because it's, an, it, the, it's the best, it's a good time to assess those things. Has something changed in, in your ability to um, uh, afford these drugs or get them? Are you uh, now in a, that uh, donut hole or, or you know, you've lost insurance and you're afraid to tell anybody? Are, you, uh, are patients starting to take their drug on an alternate schedule because of this? Or if they're having toxicities um, that um, are getting in their way of, of taking it. It's really important for us as oncologists treating these patients is uh, to look at the toxicities that they're having and manage them appropriately. Instead of just quickly saying, well, that's okay, we've got four other able tyrosine kinase inhibitors, we're just gonna switch to another one. Just keep in mind if your patients had side effects to one, they might not have the same side effect to the next one, but they're likely to have some side effect um, that will be nagging in grade one or two and they'll have to be managed. So managing toxicities is key to keeping your patients on their therapy. So seeing them often and, uh, is, um, and doing that um, is much more important than a PCR result. They could just go to the lab and get the PCR result and your nurse could call them, but that would be missing the boat. So you mean I should just not see the patient and say to them, here's your prescription, see you later? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Your clinic just got longer. All right. Yeah. That's, that's correct. So David, uh, I